Hi folks, it's Dr. G and welcome to WTW Science. Today we're going to be working with liquid nitrogen. We're all familiar with nitrogen in the atmosphere. It makes about 78% of the atmosphere, but this is liquid nitrogen. Temperature of minus 196 degrees Celsius. Let that sink in, a big fat minus sign in front of 196. To give you an idea, it's about 200 times colder than an ice cube. So let me just pour some out and get a feel for what this looks like. Like I said, it's liquid, colorless, odorless. All right, so I'm just gonna pour that very quickly. But what you're seeing out there, the white vapor is actually water vapor and not nitrogen. Right out there like this. Right, so before we even get started with the liquid nitrogen, make sure you are well protected. Respect your experiments. Goggles, gloves, closed shoes. Well, these are not real hands. So, no gloves. All right, so the first question I have is a very simple one. What would happen if you stick a balloon into liquid nitrogen, an inflated balloon? So well, let's go. Here we go. So let's remind ourselves as well, if there's any magic happening today, it's the magic of science. All right, so the air from my lungs is very, very warm, fills the balloon up, pop the balloon into liquid nitrogen, and you slowly see that the balloon seems to disappear. Okay, so the only conclusion that you can draw is that the balloon's getting smaller. Can the balloon change color? That's a possibility, all right? And here's something that you will remember for the rest of your life. Here we go. So if you have to look very carefully, the balloon seems to have shrunk. Then it seems to inflate. It's very warm in here as well, so it's almost magical. A self-inflating balloon, but there's some real science behind that. The air inside that balloon has gone so cold that it condenses to form a liquid. Remove the balloon out of the liquid nitrogen. That liquid inside starts to boil. In fact, you can actually see the liquid inside that balloon. And as the liquid boils, it gives off steam that causes that balloon to inflate. So there's your magic over there. Right, so temperature plays a very important role in determining the nature of things. For instance, I have this nice piece of rubber, which at room temperature, I could wind around my hand like this quite comfortably. What would happen if I stuck some, one of these things into liquid nitrogen? Well, you can have a look very quickly. The nitrogen gets very vigorous. It starts to boil because that piece of rubber is very warm. The nitrogen is very cold. Okay. While we're on the topic of the nature of things, here's my favorite experiment. Lady fingers, if we pop one of these into liquid nitrogen, what do you think is gonna happen? Let's check, all right? Just like that piece of rubber, it starts to boil, so the lady finger is cooling down. Make sure your finger's not in there instead of the lady finger, and that could be pretty dangerous. Try to imagine what happens to all the little air pockets inside that lady finger, that biscuit. It's cooling down. It's causing the air pockets to condense. Can we eat this biscuit while in school? Never eat, drink, or taste your experiments. Well, I've been doing this for a long, long time, so let's have a go at this. The real trick is not to pop this biscuit straight into your mouth because of that. That could break your tongue in half, all right? Wait for that liquid nitrogen to drain off quite nicely to be sure that it does so. Invert the biscuit, wait for a few seconds, take a nice sizable bite, chew and breathe. Hmm. Tasty, beautiful. All right, while we're on the topic of liquid nitrogen, remember that piece of rubber still cooling down there. Pink and white marshmallows. Room temperature, nice and soft, very tasty. What would happen if I popped one of these into liquid nitrogen? So leave that there for a while. Let's see what happens. And at the same time, while the marshmallow is cooling down, we want to pop one of these into liquid nitrogen, a squash ball. Right, at room temperature, very flexible, right, can be squashed between two fingers into liquid nitrogen and we cool that up. Okay, right, and then the ultimate question. Well, it was quite a mystery to me for a long, long time. If you took a light bulb and popped that into liquid nitrogen, well, common sense would think that, or would say that, the air inside that bulb would condense and the bulb should implode. Let's have a go, let's have a go. Let's have a look and see what actually happens. We've got a beaker of liquid nitrogen just like that over there. 
Remember, these are not real hands, hence no gloves. But you at home, respect your experiments. So we're gonna wait for that nitrogen to cool down. Well, not the nitrogen, but the beaker itself. And then I'm gonna pop this light bulb into liquid nitrogen. And most would think that the light bulb will implode. But look, it doesn't. Now we could all do this, you know, always of the belief that, you know, go home or go big. So what if we pass an electric current through that light bulb? Will the light bulb still survive? This is really tempting, dangerous as well. Well, between light bulb and marshmallow, remember the marshmallow itself? Yep. So you can now break a marshmallow. That's awesome. Right, let's get a bit more nitrogen. There. Light bulb now connected to an electric source. Please don't try this at home. All right, in there. And then switch on. Ah, there we go. This is absolutely brilliant. So you've got the filament, it's really, really hot. You've got the light nitrogen on the outside at almost minus 200 degrees Celsius. And guess what? The light still survives. That's absolutely amazing. So one would want to think why this is possible. All right, we've forgotten about two things in here. Remember the piece of rubber that we had in there? I'm not gonna stick my hand in there uh, right now, but just try and get that. If you recall, that rubber was quite flexible. Could have wound that around my arm, not anymore. I mean, you could shatter this with a hammer. Remember the squash ball in liquid nitrogen. Has the ball changed color? Has it gotten smaller? Let's have a look. Okay. Right, so we're back with the squash ball. Remember that, it's been there for a long, long time. It's cooled down significantly. Looks slightly smaller as well. So there we go, squash ball like this, against the wall. Didn't break. Okay, that's not a real wall. Okay, so. Right, so we're back with the squash ball. It's been cooling down in liquid nitrogen for some time right now. It looks slightly smaller. So what's gonna happen? If we smack this squash ball against a wall, and there you have it. Squash ball into a couple of pieces. So yeah, you can actually break a squash ball.